I thank the Honourable Member for Barker. The question is that the amendments be agreed to, and I call the Honourable Member for Richmond. Thank you so much, Deputy Speaker. And I too rise to speak on the Fair Work Amendment closing the Loopholes Act 2023. Now, of course, our government, the Albanese Labor government, was elected on the commitment to get wages moving. And to do that, we do need to close the loopholes that are indeed undermining wages and conditions. And that's exactly what these set of reforms are intended to do and what this bill is all about. Now, of course, Deputy Speaker, the bill contains four main elements criminalising wage theft, introducing minimum standards for workers in the gig economy, closing the forced permanent casual worker loophole, closing the labour hire loophole as well. Now, um, Deputy Speaker, we announced all these four policies whilst in opposition, and we took all of these to the Australian people at the election in 2022. And uh, you know, people were very supportive of this in terms of providing those better conditions uh, for workers. Now, indeed, this legislation uh, is very uh, extensive and does a, a number of different uh, number of different things. First of all, legislates a fair and objective definition of casual employee, with a new pathway for eligible employees to change to permanent employment if they wish to do so. It protects bargained wages and enterprise agreements from being undercut using labour hire workers paid less than those minimum rates. Importantly, it allows the Fair Work Commission to set uh, fair minimum standards for employer-like workers in the gig economy, introduces that new criminal offence for wage theft, uh, which applies to intentional conduct, allows the Fair Work Commission to set fair minimum standards to ensure the Road Transport Authority is safe, sustainable and viable, introduces a new offence of industrial manslaughter in the Work Health and Safety Act. And uh, it also extends the functions of the Asbestos Safety and Eradication Agency to address ciliate-related diseases. Very importantly, Deputy Speaker, it makes it unlawful to discriminate against an employee who has been or continues to be subjected to family and domestic violence. And Deputy Speaker, all of these changes that are contained within these bills are not, they're not radical changes. They are very, very reasonable changes. All we are doing is making the current law work more effectively. Closing labour hire loopholes will simply require an employer to pay rates that it's already negotiated and agreed to. These are rates of pay that's already set for the work being done. Our employee-like reforms simply require workers to have some minimum standards benchmarked against existing award rates when they're working in a way which is similar to employees. And our wage theft reforms will simply strengthen the enforcement of existing rates of pay. And most employers out there don't want to be undercut by those who are doing the wrong thing. And there is support for these changes. And our new definition of casual employment will clarify what was always intended with casual work. That is, if you're working regular and predictable hours and you want to be permanent, you will have that pathway available to you. And Deputy Speaker, in this bill, the Albanese government is also standing up for casual workers who want to become permanent employees. Well, closing the loophole leaves people stuck classified as casuals when they actually do, in fact, work permanent regular hours. That means they work just like permanent employees but don't get any of those benefits of job security currently. We're legislating a fair objective definition to determine when an employee can be classified as casual. And this will help the more than 850,000 casual workers who have regular work arrangements, giving them greater access to leave entitlements and, really importantly, greater financial security. Because the fact is that household bills aren't casual. That's the reality. Rent isn't casual. Electricity bills aren't casual. Casual, school fees aren't casual. They are absolute certainty. But these people in insecure work do not have the same certainty about their hours or their regular income. Now, of course, the fact is, um, Deputy Speaker, no one will be forced to convert from casual to permanent employment if they don't want to. And employees should not be stuck as a casual when they are working just like permanent employees but don't receive the benefits of job security, of leave entitlements. And that's why we brought in this incredibly important change. Now, we are also closing the labour hire loophole. We know that labour hire has legitimate uses in providing surge and specialist workforces, and that will continue to be the case. But this bill amends the Fair Work Act to give power to the Fair Work Commission to make orders that labour hire employees be paid at least the wages in a host enterprise agreement. The bill is delivering on the government's same job, same pay election commitment. The loophole is that the Fair Work Act allows employers to use labour hire workers who are paid less than the rates of pay agreed to in a workplaces enterprise agreement as a way to circumvent the agreed rates of pay. 
And what the government is concerned about is the labour hire loophole, which companies deliberately use to undercut the agreements they've already made with their workers. And this loophole is simply unacceptable, and that, Deputy Speaker, is why we're changing it. We're also introducing minimum standards for employee-like workers, particularly those in the gig economy. And this bill will uh, also extend the powers of the Fair Work Commission to include employee-like forms of work, allowing it to be better protect people in new forms of work from exploitation and dangerous working conditions. And Deputy Speaker, the bill implements an election commitment to allow the Fair Work Commission to set minimum standards for those employee-like workers, especially those within the gig economy. And the bill provides a list of uh, content that minimum standard orders can cover, like payment terms, deductions, insurance and cost recovery. We all know how important it is to address this, particularly when we've seen the growth in the gig economy and the many great safety concerns that we have seen. And we've acted on that because we understand how important it is to have these changes there. Now, Deputy Speaker, uh, very importantly, in this bill, it makes, uh, it makes it unlawful to discriminate against an employee who is or was subject to family and domestic violence. Uh, now, the, uh, these proposed changes are so incredibly important because it ensures that workers are not penalised in any way if they disclose that they have been subjected uh, to family and domestic violence. Uh, and it's very important to have this in place for those victim survivors. Also, on top of this, we saw the government's reforms last year uh, in terms of employees in this country having access to 10 days paid domestic uh, and family violence leave. And that indeed is a work entitlement that will save lives, and this change also will save lives. And particularly, Deputy Speaker, on those uh, 10 days of paid family and domestic violence leave, this was an issue that many, many people campaigned on and advocated for for so many years. And uh, we were very proud to be delivering that as a Labor government, as we are equally proud to be delivering these changes to ensure that there isn't any discrimination against employees who are subject to family and domestic violence. And uh, obviously, you know, this government, as we have stated many times, is absolutely committed to ending violence against women and children uh, in one generation. We've made that incredibly clear, and we have also um, had lots of bipartisan support for all of these measures as well. I know that everyone in this chamber shares that view uh, in terms of us all of us working together to get to that point. And of course, we also have had a record uh, investment of $2.3 billion to address gender based violence. So we do have that whole range of measures, but the aspects in this bill are incredibly important. Important. And uh, this proposal is to implement a job summit outcome to provide stronger protections against discrimination by including a new protected uh, attribute of subjugation to family and domestic violence in the Fair Work Act. Because we know, Deputy Speaker, family and domestic violence can affect all aspects of a person's life, including their well-being and their productivity at work, and they should not be subject to discrimination in the workplace because of uh, what has uh, occurred to them. And as I say, this proposal will clarify and strengthen protections and assist uh, victim survivors uh, to make, them, um, make it available for them to have these important workplace rights. And these amendments will prohibit national systems employers taking adverse actions such as termination of employment against employees because of their subject, subjection to family and domestic violence. So I say, Deputy Speaker, this is a very uh, important provision within the changes of these bills. Another one that I, I would like to talk about that is also incredibly important is that um, our government will make it easier for first responders who develop post-traumatic stress disorder to access workers' compensation. Uh, now we know that first responders suffering from mental health conditions such as PTSD can often find the workers' uh, compensation claims process challenging and stressful. It's so vital they get all the support that they need. And uh, as part of, the, um, of this bill, affected workers will no longer be required to prove that their job significantly contributed uh, to their PTSD when making a compensation claim. And of course, this is referred to as presumptive provisions, effectively reversing the onus of proof from the injured worker to the employer. 
And the specific reforms in this bill cover Commonwealth and ACT government first responders, including Australian uh, federal police employees, ambulance officers, and uh, paramedics. And uh, Deputy Speaker, this um, government will always provide support and stand aside the first responders who indeed keep our nation safe. And uh, I'm very pleased to be referring to this too as a former frontline police officer. Uh, I know how important it is to have these measures in place and how they have been very uh, widely welcomed as well to provide that support to our first responders who do do an incredible job. Uh, and also, uh, Deputy Speaker, of course we are in this bill. The government's taking action, uh, particularly in uh, making it safer um, in terms of our trucking industry, making it safer, sustainable, and more viable. And as part of this bill, the Fair Work Commission will have the power to set fair minimum standards for the Road Transport Authority. Now, setting standards in the road transport transport industry will save lives. That is the reality, not just for those in the industry, but for all of us who, uh, who, shares, who shares the roads. That's why these changes are equally important as well. And for too long, we have all heard so many stories of the very deadly impact of many of the cost-cutting and the unrealistic deadlines uh, that are often placed upon many of those people. And we saw that uh, in the very starkly illustrated uh, Senate report, Without Trucks Australia Stops. That's why having this in place will, will make a major difference, um, because unsustainable business practices and increasing commercial pressures are also threatening the viability of the road transport industry. And that's exactly why we're acting and why we do have these very important changes uh, here now. And under our legislation, the Fair Work Commission will have the discretion on what those minimum standards will cover, such as fair payment terms, and uh, must be satisfied that its orders won't adversely impact the viability or competitiveness of road transport contractor workers as well. So, Deputy Speaker, across a whole range of measures, we have taken a very decisive action in terms of providing greater uh, job security and greater conditions and better wages for a whole range of workers, um, particularly those in the uh, emerging areas such as the economy, and that is one that we are all very familiar with. And people for a quite a substantial period of time been calling for changes in this area to ensure that there's greater security and greater safety. So across a whole range of measures, we have actors because we know how important it is to provide that support to workers. And we were elected on that mandate. We were elected on the mandate to uh, get wages moving and to uh, make uh, workplaces fairer for everyday Australians. And uh, in conclusion, uh, Deputy Speaker, that's exactly what they've done, and I certainly commend the bill to the House. I thank the Honourable Minister. The question